let's get the middleweights out here, please. All the middleweights. This beautiful is strength on display for the world to see. There we go. Bodybuilders owning their moment on stage. Bring it home, bring it home. But it's not their muscles yeah. that make them strong. Woo. It's their stories. Elite male athletes. Number one, would you like to hit your favorite pose? All born women. Competing in the only transgender competition of its kind right here in Atlanta. Eight bodybuilders, including Kennedy Connors. Good job, Kennedy! I was born as Ashley. Who brought us along yeah. on his journey. Um, honestly, I don't know who, who that person is. That person is. Definitely don't know that one. From his past. I see lack of confidence in almost every single photo. Side triceps to his present. The process of going through this is not easy. I, I will be completely honest with you. Um, if you can imagine yourself going through male puberty and menopause at the exact same time, that's what it feels like on a daily basis. A one-time struggle for Kennedy and his wife, Nikki. Even though we had nights where we went to sleep with him without saying a word because he was just, didn't even understand what was going on in his own head. She didn't know who I was at one point. Hell, I didn't even know who I was. So at some point, I had to just stand back and let him go through it. Next pose. So he could find himself. And he just always knew that I was there and going to be there. A year ago, he had his breasts removed. It was harder for me to find out who I was from the inside by spending time with myself than trying to put a label on it. In the months since, go. he spent his time living in the gym, nice. exercising his depression, fighting his weight, one more, one more, and transforming his body, got it. but more importantly, <laughs> his mind. Because I wasn't going to enter this year's competition, I was going to wait till next year, but I wanted to get out there and just completely do it, and regardless of if I win or if I don't win, it's just the matter of. Hey, look at me. You can do this. So it's just trying to be some type of encouragement. Number one, Kennedy Connor. It was never about taking home a trophy. It was about showing us all who he is and standing proud. In Atlanta, I'm Adam Harding, CBS 46 News. In fact, take a look at this. The winds are really starting to gust right now. It is picking up that rain. It is just coming down in buckets right now, and the trees are swaying. This is the concern right now. Richard, look over here. Let me show you right over here. Come with me this way. Let me show you this area right over here. Look at the rain and the wind swirling right in the middle of the road here. That is how strong this storm can get awfully fast. And at times, it seems like this storm isn't all that severe. But as Sharon has been talking about for hours, do not let that fool you. This storm will continue to get worse throughout the afternoon, early evening, and even into parts of tomorrow. So as this rain continues, it's bringing with it that powerful wind. And when we talk about wind gusts upwards of 70, 80 miles per hour, which at times that's what's going to be forecasted for where we are, that is going to prove how devastating this storm is. Now, this area right now, it is quiet. This is a rural community. It is known mostly for timber and wood. It is known for its agriculture. And there is one historic landmark that we continue to talk about tonight, which is such a major concern for everyone here. And that is this 337 year old tree. It is what Thomasville is known for. It has been standing for three centuries. And people are so afraid that Hurricane Michael will be so strong. It will take that tree down. Of course, that will all depend on how strong this rain is and how strong that wind is. But as you can see, it is starting to kick up right now. This hurricane is making its way into Georgia, and it is bringing with it a powerful punch. Hey, Sean Adam, and Sharon, before, back to you. Adam, before we let you go, what we've noticed within the last minute or so of your live shot here, it seems like it has aggressively gotten worse just in that time. Is that what you're perceiving out there? Because it looks like that from our vantage point. Yes, and it's coming in from the side where we are right now. So that wind is really starting to kick up. Probably the strongest winds that we've seen, really. And we went on the air first this morning at 5 a.m. When we got in late last night, I think my photographer and I were a little surprised by how many people were still out there and how quiet things seemed to be. It was a beautiful evening last night. But this morning, 
Things started to get worse late in the morning, and by this afternoon, we started to see some wind and rain. But you're absolutely right, Sean. As soon as we came on the air at about 5 o'clock tonight, that is when this storm started to pick up. In fact, it's hard to see right now as this rain just hits you with a force and that wind bringing with it. So we're going to have to just hopefully watch as this storm passes us over, and then we just have to wait and see what the damage is left behind. But this is a, a relatively rural, small community. They cannot afford the type of devastation that Hurricane Michael has the potential to bring with it. And that is why so many say this is a once in a generation storm. Yeah, a rural community indeed, although we did just see a, a minivan and another truck mm -hmm. go uh, behind you there. What more are you seeing in the way of people in that community who may be out and about? Let me show you down the street over here, okay? So we've got some cars coming down Broad Street, Sharon, which is the main road uh, here in town. It's really the only road where if you were to go out on a Wednesday night, you would come. Off in the distance, it's so hard to see. Look at the boarded up windows. Now, what took us by surprise was the fact that a lot of businesses are boarded up, but there's a lot that's not boarded up. And I think people said, I was talking with one guy last night when we got in, he said, I don't know why buildings have uh, sandbags in front of the doors. What Are they really concerned about flooding reaching this area? And their reaction was, no, it's probably not going to flood. Keep in mind, Hurricane Kate was the last major hurricane that really did damage to Thomasville, and that was 32, 33 years ago. And take a look at this right here that's just blowing right across us right now. Incredible winds and rain bringing with it. This is Hurricane Michael making its way into Georgia right now. It is very difficult to stand because of this heavy wind and all of this rain, and a lot of people maybe taken by surprise by how powerful this storm was simply because they just don't know what a powerful hurricane is like in this part of the state. It is so isolated from the water. It is so far removed from any areas that typically sees damage. And I think that is why most people just assumed that this storm wouldn't be that bad. Folks, this storm has the potential to be devastating, and this wind and this rain is only getting worse as time continues. So as you mentioned, Sharon, some people are still out. It is so dangerous to be out right now. That is why the ambulances, we've seen police within the last hour come by. They stopped a driver, presumably to try to get him to get off of the road, knowing that this storm had already done so much damage in Florida, and now it is making its way into Georgia, and it will only continue to get worse as more of that storm enters our state. This is only the appetizer. Hard to believe what the entree has in store. Thomas, good afternoon. We're here at the Tropical Taste Restaurant, or what's left of the Tropical Taste Restaurant, surveying a lot of this damage in some of the hardest hit areas from Hurricane Michael. And this devastation that we're finding today, now that the sun is up, Thomas, it's quite simply surreal. Take a look at this, all of this sheet metal. Now, this metal doesn't even belong to the front awning of this business here in this strip mall here off the main drag in Albany. This is just one of so many pieces of damage. In fact, just take a look at how much destruction there really is with all of that bent metal. To give you an idea, when the wind started picking up late last night, we were still under Category 1 hurricane force wind. So we were talking about wind gusts upwards of 85 miles per hour. And as we talked about, remember when we drove from Thomasville here to Albany, which is in Doherty County, we went through that hurricane and witnessed firsthand just how extremely powerful this storm really was. I mean, just look at this, for example. This really caught our attention. This metal right here, let's walk you in just a little bit. This metal is bent at 90 degrees. That will give you an idea of how strong these winds really were. Just take a look at that. It is bent just completely right over. Now, we're seeing sites like this all over town here. We're seeing down trees. And despite, just like Megan's conditions, we're talking about beautiful blue skies today. Hard to believe that not even 24 hours ago, it was just a far different story. So as far as we can see, there is destruction everywhere. There are some roads that are flooded. There are roofs out of homes and businesses. We'll have a live report ahead at 5 o'clock. You'll hear from some of those families affected and how they are now beginning the long cleanup process. This is low-lying area. People know this area tends to flood. We're here in the heart of Charleston, South Carolina, one of the areas on the coast that is bracing for this hurricane. Take a look at this. The businesses are already boarded up for the most part. A lot of this you'll see. These are sandbags that are blocking the front of the doors here. The idea here is when all of the rain hits, and there's going to be a lot of it, when all of this rain hits, these 
these sandbags will hopefully stop some of that water from going inside a lot of these businesses. We expect gas will be very difficult to come by in the coming days, and that is why the governor here ordered all of these evacuations. Let me take you across the street here. We're on what's called Springs Island. The beach is on the other side of these businesses here. All of these businesses, as far as the eye can see right now, boarded up. Now, some of them are still open. Clearly, some people are going to choose to ride out this storm. But the governor says that is a mistake. Well, Karen, I got to tell you, some wind is just starting to pick up. But for all intents and purposes, it is a relatively nice afternoon. In fact, you can see behind us, some people are starting to walk. The water is what everybody is keeping their eye on as this storm inches closer to the coastline here in South Carolina. The fear is that with that storm surge, we'll see some flooding. Right now, the question, though, is who will evacuate? A picture capturing the calm ahead of Hurricane Florence. At first I thought the world was coming to an end, and then now I think we're just getting a regular Charleston thunderstorm. Abigail Blackburn says evacuating crossed her mind. Now, maybe not. Every year it's a Hugo's coming again, and the next thing you know it's, oh, never mind, everything's fine. I don't really see it hitting that much, honestly. I think, I think we'll be okay. It's a monster storm. We'll definitely get flooding down here. Staring at the Carolinas. I think the waters will definitely get higher, um, a little bit more rough. The birds always go crazy. Look, don't let these calm conditions fool you. Even though Florence has been downgraded to a Category 2 hurricane, the potential here is that the storm could hover over the South Carolina coast. It could bring with it some three to three and a half feet of rain. Just look at all the water that's already here. So many chose not to evacuate. I definitely think more people are here than what I thought, but I can definitely tell that 98% of the town evacuated. A hurricane threatening to make history. It's certainly worth a picture. So as we come back out live, again, the conditions are relatively calm. We're still a few hours away from what we expect will be tropical storm force winds later on tonight into tomorrow. In terms of any rain, though, Karen, we have not seen any today. The skies are overcast. Clearly something is on the horizon. The question, though, is how big will it be when it reaches us in Charleston? Apparently not enough to slow down some kids from... Uh, going on a skateboard behind us. Live in Charleston, I'm Adam Harding, CBS 46 News. A lot of activity behind you there, Adam. Thanks so much. It's the small South Carolina city where the fun has come to an end. So what's going on today? Are you packing up? We are packing up and leaving. The State Fair saying goodbye to the city of Florence before they have to say hello to Hurricane Florence. Karma. <laughs> Karma. Workers here are used to their own twisters and tornadoes. This hurricane's leaving because the other one's coming. Not Category 4 hurricanes. That's the ride called the hurricane. I've never been through a hurricane. I've driven through a tropical storm in a semi, so that was a little scary. So with a full force hurricane coming, that worries me. What's the big concern with this powerful storm? Obviously, there's some equipment. There's a Ferris wheel. You don't want that moving around in the wind? No. <laughs> Not at all. How, how long is it going to take to even break all this down? Well, they work pretty fast, so it's going to be within probably another hour. Trying to beat the storm. Yeah. The weather these days is too much of a roller coaster. It's no longer safe to just clown around. Were they having some fun before yeah, they took they a look were. at the forecast? They were. They were. They had hoped to stay in town through the weekend. Talk about unfair. Is it disappointing that you have to pack up now? I'm sure you still want it to continue on. I did, I did. But it better be safe than sorry, so. The rush is on. These are the families bracing for Hurricane Florence. Sweaty, sorry. How big of a concern is Florence? Well, this morning it looks more south, so yeah, it's a bigger concern now. Pat McDowell is retired army. He's bagging as much sand as he can. All right, like this? After. Knowing it's his best defense against flooding. We're talking about 40 inches of rain, and every time it rains, like five to ten inches out in my house, all the way 12, because we live in an area that has septic tanks, and it's a little wide in area. The concern now is this hurricane could continue to track just a little bit more south. It could hit here in South Carolina. Just take a look at the number of people today. It is a mad rush to get some sand before this hurricane hits the east coast. How much sand did you grab? 
Uh, seven bags. You got seven bags. Yes, sir. Florence is, uh, everyone's worried about this one. I'm worried about the rain more than the wind. Hurricane Florence threatens the Carolinas, many fearing this will be the worst storm to hit here in decades. People know this area tends to see a lot of flooding. Yes. And, and this so, could be a big storm. Yes, yeah, so that's why we're getting ready now. You know, so it's good to see the people are listening now and better than than listen when it's late. So uh, this is a good thing to help us also because they're getting, they're getting prepared. In some areas it can flood pretty bad. At my house we have a drainage ditch going through the backyard and then during the thousand year flood it was an inch from coming in my house. Wow. A lot of work to get all this sand now, huh? A lot, but it's crazy how everybody's working together. <laughs> Well, Sharon, it is now time for cleanup after Hurricane Michael, like this sign behind us that was blown down by this hurricane late last night. The devastation is everywhere. This is step one, which is quite literally picking up the pieces. Oglethorpe and Radium Springs is where we are. That's the new sign. If you want to see where the old street sign is, it's right here. It got blown off by Hurricane Michael. Perhaps we can call this a sign of the times, a sign of things to come. We're live tonight in Doherty County in Albany. I'm Adam Harding, CBS 46 News. Adam, um, I wonder, you know, there's so much destruction there. Are people worried about just the time it's going to take to rebuild their lives and those structures? I think they know they have a long fight ahead of them, Sharon. And one of the things that we need to talk about really is the benefit now that they have blue skies to begin that work right away. Because this hurricane was so fast moving, they were able to get early this morning a jump start on the cleanup. But Sharon, when I tell you that trees were down last night as we drove through this hurricane, that is exactly the case. But as we came down the highways today, we saw law enforcement, we saw the roads, they were starting to get clear, but they know they have a long day ahead of them.